Today is a rainy day, one of the rare summer days when there's not a lot of uh, rain. So we've got rain, so we can't work in the fields. So I'm going to show our staff how to make effective air layers. You must be wondering why these junipers are like this, with these long, long branches. These junipers have been grown in a special way. If you look at it closely, the perfect tree is here. It's a shohin tree. Look at all the branches, twisted trunks with cherries, all been done. But this long bit, we asked our grower to deliberately leave this so that we can air layer it. In Japan, they would just chuck it away. But I asked them to keep it for our, our, our use. Now, junipers are one of the easiest subjects to air layer. Much easier than air layering a Japanese maple. Now let me explain to you why. If we bring the camera close, you will see exactly what I mean. If you home in on this, you see all these little nodules, nodules. They're like little lumps and bumps. These are what we call the dormant or rudimentary roots. If you were to put some mud on it or sphagnum moss without doing anything, they will become roots. I will show you, you probably have seen these before, but all of these trees here, there are more than 50 or 60 Itoigawa junipers which we earlier starting in October throughout the winter and by March we could separate them. So in about four or five months they root and these have already been separated since March and I've successively put them in bigger and bigger pots. So they are well on their way to becoming very useful, usable junipers. So much faster than propagating by cuttings. So these are the trees that we cut them off from. You can see we've cut the top off, the air rings have been cut off, and we end up with this lovely Shohin juniper, which we will pot up into bonsai pots. So those are the air layings which have been produced in the last few months. Now, because we've got such a lot, we will continue doing this. Now, just to show you, if you come here to look at this one. This one I separated only a couple of hours ago. You can still see there are some roots over here that I managed to cut off from the air layering. So this was cut off. So there was a new plant from there. I'm not going to cut these off. I could easily cut it off and make them into gins, but I'm going to air layer all these as well. So can you imagine from one plant, I'm getting five new plants from it. But of course, look at these ones. These are so thick. Every single one and all these, what we call nodules, dormant roots, I bet you anything, within four to six weeks, I will get roots coming out from here. So we'll be able to separate it by October. It is now end of August, so September, October, two months, eight weeks, we should be able to get a root ball which we can separate. So we're going to work on these. So let me show you the entire process step by step, because a lot of people like to see these things over and over again. So I'm going to separate this part. So this part is going to become the new tree. And of course from here, this is the new tree that we will make, the show-in tree. And look at all these lovely nodules, which are the dormant roots. So what I do, I remove the bark completely. If you look at Bonsai Masterclass, there are so many different ways you can make the air layering. You can leave a sliver or a bridge if you don't want to remove all the bark. So the secret is to remove the bark till you come into the wood, like so. So you remove the bark, and the amount of cut I make is roughly the same length as the thickness or the diameter of the trunk. So this is the amount I will remove. I used what we call a box cutter or we call it a Stanley knife in the UK because it's made by a company called Stanley. You can see, so that's just a knife. You can use a grafting knife, pen knife or whatever. So there are many ways of doing it. If you look at Bonsai Masterclass, you can even leave these little bits like this. You don't have to remove it. And that will also enhance the propagation process. But the thing is, get 
down to the wood. You've got to get down to the wood. But don't scrape too much of the wood. So remove all that. All around the trunk, completely around the trunk. All the bark is removed. As I say, you can remove it completely if you wish. But I can leave it like this. Sometimes they form roots from there. So that's the first process. The roots are going to form here, not here. So the roots will come out from here. So we'll put the bag from here to there. We don't want roots here. The roots don't come from there. They come from the top there. So that's the first step. The next step is to dust it with hormone rooting powder. Hormone rooting powder, because we are a commercial nursery, we buy it in bulk. A pot like that costs nearly 100 pounds. But if you go to a garden center, those little, little pots are about three, four, five pounds. But this is very strong stuff. So this is undiluted. This is very strong stuff. So I use it very sparingly. And of course, I put it in a little pot like that. And then with a paint brush or a soft, small brush, you take the powder and you smear it onto that bit of wood because that's where the roots are going to come from. All right. You can also apply water. It helps to stick, but I don't like to contaminate it too much. But as long as the powder is put, that is what we want. And then we're going to find the sphagnum moss. A lot of people do not know what sphagnum moss is. Is. Sphagnum moss is a plant that grows on the edges of ponds and in damp areas. So this is sphagnum moss. You can get it from all sorts of sources, but commercially we buy it from a supplier that imports this from New Zealand. So all you New Zealanders who watch this video will be very proud that I'm using a product that comes from New Zealand. And what is the plastic I use to wrap it in? I use clear plastic, some people use black plastic, but you don't need to. Clear plastic is very good, and you can also see another type of plastic we use, uh, the spent Akadama bag plastics. It's just the right consistency, very strong, not flimsy, and that's just the right sort of size for making the root ball. So let me use some of these spent Akadama bags. So what I'm trying to do is to make a little cup or a bag like so and then I wrap some wire around it to keep it tight. Many people ask me, do you have to water the moss? Yes, the moss should be wet to begin with, but if you wrap it tightly in plastic, once it is damp and moist, the moisture will be retained in there and it shouldn't dry out. But should you want to water it, you can also water it to be absolutely sure that it doesn't dry out. But this is quite damp moss, so I'm just using the damp moss. And once you've made a little bag or a cup like this, you can just stuff it filled with moss. The bigger the bag you make, the more effective it is because it generates more heat and it gives more room for the roots to grow. So try and make the bag as big as possible. I always remind my viewers that when I was growing up in India, we used to see the gardeners use ordinary mud. Mud is also okay. The trouble is mud can be very dense and it can dry out, but in the tropics like in India and in Indonesia, China and these places, they have a wet rainy season called the monsoons where the rain is incessant it rains so heavily that it's like raining cats and dogs and because it's damp and wet the humid hot conditions generates the roots very quickly so you see i made a little like a tennis ball size for a branch this thick and i stuffed it full of moss and then once i've stuffed it i can then wrap the wire around 
to tie the other end. You see, I used a very long piece of wire. This is bonsai wire. And this is what I tied tight like this. Tied tight. And the other end, I just tie like this. And if you leave it, keep the plant watered. And hey presto, in six to eight weeks, you should get the whole bag filled with roots. So this is how we do these air layerings of juniper. So I hope you have learned something useful from this. And believe you me, it is very, very easy to do. So there you go.